Good evening, good evening, good evening. How's everybody doing? Let me adjust something. This light is a little too bright for me. Let's see if we can straighten that out. How's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Uh, if you can, invite some people to come in here tonight. Can you hear me? Is my signal good before I get started? Is my signal good? Can you hear me? All right. Let's see, let's see. Is my signal good? I don't see any comments. I don't see any comments. Where are my comments at? Okay, here we go, all is well. Yes, can hear you. Okay, good, 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 good. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well tonight. Um, got a good subject matter to discuss tonight. If you know some brothers, you can invite them to come in as well. Uh, I think it's going to be enlightening for, really for everybody. I was uh, doing a, um, what is it, Instagram, I think it was. I was doing Instagram yesterday or day before, forget. And I started talking about, as I was walking, I started talking about three kinds of men. A healthy man, a broken man, and a toxic man. And um, I don't know, I was just kind of inspired on the moment to really do it. And um, so I, I, I thought to just kind of dive a little deeper into this because I think it's important for us to know the difference. And see, all of this um, goes back to um, what I try to teach, what I try to get you to understand. When I say you, I'm specifically talking to females. You got to get beyond the wrapping and you have to really get to the content of a man because there are a lot of you that are just picking up uh, beautifully wrapped packages on the side of the road and then when you get it home and you finally unpack it after you've brought it into your life you discover that you you had you you, you picked up a box of rattlesnakes you have to kind of you know bring a cerebral process to your um, relationship um, process and figure some things out about a man. And there's uh, some things that we're going to say tonight that I want, I really want brothers to hear because I've had to, as a man, thank you all for sharing. Thank you all for uh, sowing into my life. I've had to really stop and do some real, real deep introspection as a man. You know, because I, I found myself um, really becoming a toxic kind of guy, teetering, you know, teetering between broken and toxic. And it took the spirit of God to really arrest me and to bring me to myself and to bring me into a place as a man, bring me into a place of repentance. And repentance is what? More than just being sorry about uh, something you've done. Repentance is actually taking the initiative to get up and turn around and go in, go in the opposite direction. And so because I've been there and I've done this, you know what I mean? I can teach this with, with passion, with clarity, with integrity, because I'm not that guy anymore. That's why I push back when I hear you all say that no good man, uh, man can't change. Um, a man can change, but you can't change him. I'll say that again because some of you all need to hear that. A man can change, but you, you can't change him. It, takes, it really takes the will of the man and it takes God in the man to empower the man to change. Now, I'll say this as well. If a man has the right heart, you know, if he has the right heart, if he's just a broken guy, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, and he has the right heart towards you and towards God, 
the right woman will motivate a man to want to change. The right woman will motivate a man to want to change. But the woman can't sit there and feel like, I can change you. Nor should you, nor should a woman put her life on hold thinking that, you know, I'm going to change him eventually. No, that, that it, it may happen. You know, you're not going to change him. He may change, but it won't be because you did something. But then again, he may not change. And is it wise for any of us to put our lives on hold, um, you know, waiting for another person to do something that's clearly in their power? You know, um, going back to my story relative to Lisa and I, Lisa loved me, but she didn't put her life on hold for me. She moved on. And when she moved on, I had a real come to Jesus moment and I had to recognize some things. And then God and I got together and I changed. But she didn't sit around waiting to change me. That's a that's a massive mistake because life is precious. Life is precious. Time is precious. And there's nobody, you know, walking on the planet that deserves you sacrificing your life for them in hopes that they do right by you eventually. Wouldn't be smart. So these three men, a healthy man, a broken man and a toxic man. That's what we're going to look at tonight. Call somebody, tweet somebody. Tell them to come into this discussion tonight. I think this is going to really be good. Now, um, here's the first thing I jotted down. These are just some thoughts I, I had, J just kind of jotted down. So it's not like a, a structured lesson. These are just thoughts that I'm going to share with you tonight. A healthy man, a healthy man, and I'm going to define what a healthy man looks like for you in just a minute. But a healthy man is usually created by parenting. Usually created by parenting. A healthy man is either created by parenting or divine intervention. Either he was raised right or he had some kind of encounter with God that adjusted his life to make him a healthy man. Um, a broken man, a healthy man is usually created by parenting or divine intervention. Parents either raised him right, he had great example in front of him, or he had, if he didn't have those things, he had some kind of divine intervention that God really stepped into his life and shifted him and shook him back into place. Now, a broken man is usually produced by a lack of parenting. Usually a broken man is produced by an absent father or a father that's present. That's a horrible example. He's either a broken man is produced by a, a lack of parenting and or a bad relationship. Because the thing we don't talk about, because it happens more to women than it does men. The thing we don't talk about is that there are women who actually break men. There are women who actually break men. You have a man that really has the right heart. He, he ain't got no game in him. You know, he's really in it to win it. He really gives his heart to a woman and then she plays him and she sleeps around on him or she goes off with somebody else. And now you've taken a good man and you've broken him and now you've, you've turned him bad. That happens more, more times than we like to talk about. So a broken man is produced by a lack of parenting or bad relationships or he's produced by social conditioning. In other words, he grows up in, in society. Uh, he grows up in the barbershop. Now, I know all barbershops are not created equal, so this is not just a, you know, a slant on all barbershops because some barbershops have a standard depending on the owner. But there are, some, there are a lot of barbershops, especially in the black community. I can't speak for any other community, but in the black community, barbershops are where we get misogynistic, um, uh, narcissistic training. It's where we learn the game and in the barbershop. 
And so guys are broken either by lack of parenting, bad relational experience, and then coupled with the, the, you know, the kind of indoctrination that uh, men typically get in society. You know, you don't have to go far. You can just kind of search through the Internet. You can hear guys talking about how to, you know, how to play a woman, how to move into a woman's house. Or one guy talking about how to move into a woman's house and never leave and all this kind of stuff. Well, you know, that broken men tend to train one another. But the beauty, of, the beauty about a broken man is that a broken man can be fixed. I was a broken man, you know. I was broken not because I had a lack of parenting, uh, not even because I had bad relationships. I was, I was broken because I just kind of grew up too fast, you know. Really, a lot of, lot of my issues were self-inflicted wounds. Um, well, not all of it, because I was sexualized by older women early, very early in my life, which put me like 15, 20 years ahead of all of the young girls that were my age, which made me a terror. And society says, oh, you the man, you young and you doing this, you the man. So I really thought I had it going on. And so now I become a teenage father early and all of this kind of stuff. And so, you know trying to process, trying to figure out what, what, what manhood and life really was about um, became a challenge for me. So the healthy man is usually created by, by good parenting. A broken man is produced usually by lack of parenting, bad relational experiences, and uh, poor social conditioning. But then a toxic man is manufactured under the pressure of um, really, I, I believe, demonic influence. It's demonic influence, social conditioning, and chronic low self-esteem. The toxic man. There's a difference, and I'm going to show you the difference between a, a healthy man, a broken man, and a toxic man. Sometimes you're dealing with a broken man and you're calling him a toxic man. He's, you know, he, 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 he's, he's teetering but, you know, when you start talking about a true toxic man, here's a man that's been raised by the streets. Here's a man that is demonized for those of you that subscribe to spirituality. And here's a man that has low self-esteem. Now, the, the strange thing about the toxic guy is that he has the lowest self-esteem, but he portrays as though he presents himself into, you know, onto the world uh, in social media, in circles. He presents himself as though he has all of the confidence in the world. And the reality is that he has the lowest of self-esteem. So let's, let's jump in. Number one, a healthy man. A healthy man is a man that is fully established. Listen to this very carefully. A healthy man is a man that is fully established in his masculine energy and he rejects misogynistic and toxic concepts of manhood. He rejects it. He rejects the idea that um, a woman is property. He rejects the idea that just because he has male genitalia, it makes him uh, superior to the woman. He, he rejects the idea that because, you know, he brings the paycheck home, he's the prize. No, no, no healthy man is going to be calling himself the prize. That is, uh, mm -mm, no. A healthy man, let's define what a healthy man looks like. A healthy man is a man that is in sync with God. He's a man that is in sync with God, his creator, he's spiritual, in view of his purpose. He knows why he exists. He knows why he lives. And he's in step with his mission. A healthy man is, is a man that is in sync with God, in view of his purpose, in step with his mission, and in love with his woman. A healthy man loves his woman. 
Now he loves his woman, of course, with um, an exclusive love, but a healthy man loves all women. He loves his mother, he loves his sisters, he loves his daughters, he loves his aunts, he loves his, he loves his female co-workers, he loves his friends. He lo he, he's in love with womanhood to the point that he protects womanhood. I hear, I hear toxic guys say all the time, R.C., why do you always, why are you always talking to, to women? It's because it's the natural, it's the natural inclination of a healthy man to protect and to empower womanhood. A man is not naturally inclined to protect another man. Now, I know I have a responsibility as a leader to raise up a generation of men. I know I have a responsibility as a leader to impart into men. But at my base nature as a healthy man, my inclination is to empower womanhood, especially when I'm conscious of the fact that womanhood for generations has been broken down by toxic generations of manhood. It's because a healthy man is a man that is in sync with God, in view of his purpose, in step with his mission, and in love with womanhood. Watch this. A healthy man is whole enough. Listen to this very carefully, because some of y'all never met this. A healthy man is whole enough to support all that his woman is and is wise enough to see her as the extension of himself. A healthy man is not trying to subjugate his woman. He's not trying to diminish his woman. Listen, ladies, you have to be very careful with the language of a man. Listen to me well now. You have to be very, very, very careful with the language of a man. See, a man that has any measure of influence, if you find yourself attracted to the voice of a man as a teacher, as an influencer, uh, as a romantic interest or whatever, as a pastor, you have to pay very close attention. Before you open your heart wide to everything that man is saying, you have to pay very close attention to the language of that man. Because a man that is not healthy will use his language to tie your soul up. A man doesn't have to sleep with you to create a soul tie. A man can use his language. He can build you up and then slam you to the ground with his language and make you feel about that small. And what do I call it? That's when he creates the approval trap. The same man that built you up and then rejected you. Doesn't have to just be romantic and just it can be a guy that you listen to all the time. But his language towards you as a woman is demeaning and diminishing. He builds you up and he slams you to the ground consistently. Builds you up and he slams you to the ground and you find yourself drawn to that, drawn to that. You're becoming um, codependent to a toxic individual. Let's see something here. Go to Genesis chapter 2. Verses 20 uh, through 23. See, a real man, when a real man speaks, there are a few things that will happen and won't happen. Number one, when a real man speaks into your life, you will never be afraid. Doesn't matter even if he's angry. A real man, a healthy man will speak. You can know he's angry, but you'll never be afraid because he'll never project that. You know his love for you as a woman or as womanhood is so great that you know he'll never hurt you. A real man, when he speaks, he never makes you feel small. He may educate you, you know, he may say some things that make you look back and think about what you're doing, but he never diminishes you and, and he never empties your self-esteem bank. He's always pouring into your self-esteem bank. You know, I, like I, where was I at? I don't know if it was on here, but I was somewhere and everybody thought it was so funny, but I was being honest. When, when, when my sisters take these pictures on um, social media, you know, m my thought is, and I know I'm, I'm going to chase this rabbit, I'm going to come on back to the trail, but my thought is, 
when you start talking about putting images on social media and go to Genesis 2, 20 through 23, um, you're talking about promoting something, you know, you're, you're either promoting something or you're projecting um, the highest um, perception of you. That's the right way of saying that. You're either selling something, you're promoting something, you're selling it, or you're projecting the best version of you. Why is it that you're taking all these shots from behind? Is that, do you feel like that's the best version of you to show you're behind to the world? Well, you hear me saying that, but you, you can also feel the love coming, you know, riding beneath the surface of my words. And a lot of y'all do it, you know, and you, some of y'all laugh and you send me messages and say, Bishop, you know, you was talking about me, Lord, I got to go and look, check my Instagram. I got to pull you, you know, and we laugh about it. I'm telling you the truth. It's a hard truth, maybe, but you can feel the love. It's not a demeaning, diminishing, because a real man, a healthy man, he is whole enough to support all that the woman is and wise enough to see her as the extension of himself. He's never trying to subjugate her or make her a second class citizen. A healthy man is never trying to make you a second class citizen. He's always trying to bring you up like Adam did Eve. Well, let's read it. Genesis 2, 20 through 23. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found in help meet for him. And the Lord God caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought unto, unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She's my equal. She shall be called woman, a man with a womb, woman, womb man. She's, a, she's my equivalent. She just has the capacity to give birth. Come on now. Because she was taken out of man. He's recognizing her as his equal. Why? Because at this point, he's a healthy man. He's a whole man. He is whole enough to support all that his woman is. And he's wise enough to see her as the extension of himself. Now watch this. Here's the revelation I like to pull out of this all the time. When God made Adam, he reached into the dirt and formed him and then breathed breath into him. And then Adam became a living soul, the Bible says. Go and read it. But when he got when God got ready to make Eve, Adam was was so whole and so complete that God simply reached into Adam, pulled out a rib and created a whole woman. He was a whole healthy man. He 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 could accommodate all that his woman was. And he was wise enough to see her as the extension of himself. He didn't see her as his slave. And y'all got to push back on that. I I I. I you know, you got to push back on it. Don't be so desperate for uh, a wedding that you, you let a generation of sick, perverted men talk you into slavery and you sitting there agreeing with it. That ain't God's plan. That's not kingdom. That's not what God designed. That woman over there in that other room over there, that's, that woman's not my slave. That woman's my partner. She's my equal. When I look her, look at her, I see my equal. I respect her as my equal. Now, do we have roles we play? Of course we do. It ain't but one man up in this house and you looking at him. It ain't but one woman up in this house and she over there somewhere. And we it's yin and yang. But we have an equal respect. And a healthy man like Adam is, is going to be enough to accommodate all that you are, all that you will be. He's not sitting there trying to pick away at your dreams. No, no. What happens is when you are as a woman, listen to what I'm saying as a woman. That's why you need to go back to that thing we talked about last time about vetting, because you got to get beyond these looks. You got to get to the mentality and the spirit, the soul of a man, because when you find the right man, a healthy man, he's not going to be sitting there trying to figure out, well, how are we going to pull, pick your life apart? So that you can just, you know, uh, uh, he's going to look at what you got going on. He's going to look at what his goals and dreams are. And we're going to sit at the table and we're going to figure this out. And we're going to what? We're going to partner with, with one another. We're going to do what? We're going to serve one another. You know, I'm going to help you do your thing here. You're going you're gonna to help me do this here. And all of this is what? Our thing. We're building a kingdom as a king and a queen. 
But it takes a healthy man to see it like that. A man that's not healthy is always going to try to clip your wings when he knows you're an ego. He will work overtime to diminish you. Oh, okay. Now let's look at some characteristics of a healthy man. Um, letter A, he gives. A healthy man is a giver. A healthy man is a giver. He's, he's a liberal guy, not just financially. He's liberal with his time. Uh, he's, he's liberal. He, he's a giver. He's, he's just a giver. He pays attention and he gives you what you need when you need it. He's a listener. See, a man that cannot listen is not, is not healthy. There's something that's off there. And it doesn't necessarily mean that he's a bad guy or a toxic guy, but it does mean that there's, there's, there's a part of him that, um, what's the wording I'm looking for, needs some kind of reassuring, some kind of ministry. Because to be, to be a man, to be a husband, to be a father, I've learned that you have to be a listener. And I think, you know, I, I think that's why women get upset when we don't pick up on things that we could have picked up on had we listened. Sometimes we say, well, I'm not a mind reader. And the reality is that many times our women have, have told us what's really on their hearts on multiple occasions. We just weren't listening. But a healthy man is a listener. He listens. Uh, let us see. He supports. He supports. You know, um, I'll wash the dishes. I'll do a little best I can do. You know, if I'm the if I'm the last one out the bed, I'll make the bed up. Um, you know, I'm a supporter. You know, my wife got some stuff going on. You know, hey, you ain't got to be slaving over no stove. Let's let's you know, let's go let's go out let's go out. Let me bring you out. I like bringing you out anyway, because I'm a what? I'm a supporter to my wife. If I'm leaning on my woman, if a man is going to lean on a woman as much as we men do need to lean on our women, you got to support the thing that supports you. But it takes a healthy man to understand that a man that is not healthy is like a slave driver. He beats a woman down, drains her, drains her, drains her, drains her, drains until she drops. Um, he's unguarded. Oh, that's a good one right there. A healthy man is unguarded. You know how you get around a dude and you can feel he has all kinds of walls up and you can tell that he's hiding a whole lot of stuff and you can tell that he's perpetrating. When a guy is healthy, he's unguarded. You know what I mean? You ask him a question, he answers. Look you straight in the eye. You know what I mean? He ain't got nothing to hide, you know. Y'all, y'all, y'all talking, you know, y'all, y'all dating or whatever and he claims to be a church guy. Well, you know, he, he ain't like trying to keep you away from his church. He, he kind of, won't you come to church with me this Sunday? You know, because he's unguarded. He's a healthy man, doesn't have all those secrets. He, he, doesn't, have, he doesn't have any secrets to protect. He, he has not told any lies that he got to try to cover and remember. He's a healthy guy. He's unguarded. He doesn't have to be. That's the most beautiful thing in the world for me as a man is to be in a place where, you know, I walk my talk. I, I walk my talk. I walk my talk. I walk my talk. I, you know, I walk my talk. That's a beautiful thing. I ain't got no lie. I ain't got no lies to keep up with. If I go to sleep, go to talking in my sleep. I ain't got to worry about what I'm going to be saying in my sleep. I walk my talk. Everywhere I go, all over the nation, I walk my talk. I live the life I preach about. That's a beautiful thing. But I'm a healthy dude now. You know what I mean? Uh, letter E, he's, he, he has a stable disposition. He has a stable disposition. See, <sighs> a lot of times when you think about it, when you think about it, the dudes, you, the dudes that you're attracted to are unstable. And the, the thing that you're most attracted to is their instability. You like, you like guys that are unpredictable, you know? So maybe that says something about your level of health. 
you know, maybe we need to talk about, maybe we need another time where we talk about the healthy woman, the broken woman, and the toxic woman. Because a lot of times the thing that, that you're most attracted to is the dysfunction of a man. And when you find a man that's functional and healthy, you say, he's boring. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching good. Y'all find a healthy man, you say he's boring. No drama. He don't give you no reason to have to be going through his phone. He don't give you no reason to be hiding in the bushes trying to see what he doing, who he with. What he, he walk his talk because he's healthy. And sometimes you're not attracted to that. Sometimes you are so broken that your, your normal is dysfunctional. Your functional is dysfunction. Uh, letter F, he answers questions. A healthy man answers questions. And watch this. And he doesn't mind answering questions. See, you, you get a man that you go to answer, asking questions and he, he pushes back on your asking him questions. He ain't to be trusted. How you going to be my leader and you can't ask no questions? How how you expect me uh, to, to submit to you and I can't ask you questions, Rabbi? And when I ask you questions, you ain't got no answers. Mm -mm. The Bible says of um, the Queen of Sheba, when she went to see Solomon, she went to prove him with hard questions. And when he got through answering her questions, the Bible says in the Bible infers that she fainted. She said, the half has not been told. Everything I've asked you, you've answered. He blew her mind because a healthy man has answers to questions. What do I see in that book right there? Queenology. What do I see in that book? Queens ask questions that only kings can answer. If you, want to, if you want to peep the level of a man, start asking certain questions. If a man pushes back on your questions or if you're asking a man questions and he wants to turn it into a joke so he can twist the conversation in, the, in, a, in another direction, red flaming flag that is not to be ignored. Waiter, check please, check please, check please. A healthy man, letter G, has interest in others. You start seeing a man is just sitting up there and all he's talking about is me and my money and, and uh, you know, what I want to do and, 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 and all. Uh, that's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. Kings are always interested in the kingdom. Because the king understands without the kingdom, the throne means nothing. So when you find a healthy man, he's interested in you, what your interests are. Because, you know, I play chess and anybody that plays chess understands that though the game is over when if the king gets captured, the most powerful piece on the board is the queen. So the king is always concerned about the well-being of the queen, his interests. He's even concerned about the pawns. Come on, somebody. I'm preaching better than y'all shouting. He's concerned about the rooks, the bishops. the not Come on, somebody. Any healthy man has interest in others. Now, I know you, you, you see, as much as y'all say, I hate narcissists, I hate narcissists, you love self-absorbed men. That's a contradiction. You love a man that's going to spend more time in the mirror than you. You love a man that puts himself above everything and everybody else. He's not a healthy man, babe. Any healthy man is concerned about you know, you know what you can hear from a healthy man a lot? You good? You good? How you doing, babe? How you doing? How you doing? Ask my wife. She hears that from me all the time. How you, you, you good? How you feel? You all right? You all right? You need anything? You need anything? Come on, somebody. Because a healthy man is interested in others. And watch this letter H, and I'll shut it down here relative to the characteristics of a healthy guy. He has a track record of healthy relationships. Even if he has an ex or a mother of his ch child or children, you know what you will never get out of him? You'll never get him to drag that woman. 
You know what else you're going to see in him? You're going to see that he has good uh, long-term friendships. You're going to see that he has a decent relationship with his, with his parents and his family. Uh, but you run upon a man that has no connection to anybody, there's something wrong. He has no friends. Every woman that he's ever had, you know, she a B, she a H, and she a this, and he go off on this, this angry tirade. He ain't healthy. A healthy man has a track record of healthy relationships. Even if they've ended, he's going to always talk about the good in that individual. And you're gonna see, you're gonna get, this is my friend, this is my friend Jim. We've been, we've been friends for 50 years. See dudes that are not healthy, especially dudes that are toxic. Toxic dudes don't have long-term relationships like that. They find a way to burn every bridge that uh, is built to, to them. These are things that you gotta pay attention to, you know? I'm just trying to get y'all to be a little more cerebral. Stop popping all this gum, taking all these booty pictures and start thinking your way through life. Yeah, I, I did say it. Stop popping all this gum because you, you're more intelligent than that. Stop popping all this gum, taking all these booty pictures, putting them on the, the social media, talking about the, the, the bus it challenge. Let's have a, a self-respect challenge now. And, and start thinking your way through life. Start really looking for stuff deeper than uh, you know, the dude's hair texture or his fragrance or his height or how much money he says he has. A lot of these cats talking about they got this amount of money. Let me tell you something. A man that really has money, he ain't telling you about what he got. He, 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 not, he not out there just putting his money in the street like that. I'm, I'm, I make six figures. I make seven figures. No, no man that really has money like that talk about money like that. Mm-mm. He, he not out there trying to prove nothing to you. You'll figure it out. Yeah, you figure it out. Uh, real, people with real money, they don't talk about it like that. Unless they're teaching other folk how to make it, then they'll say, okay, let me show you my back end. I'll show you how, and I'm trying to teach you how to do something, so let me show you my back end. But just out here on, so they're not out here uh, projecting like that. Mm -mm. Just people with real money, it's so unassuming. You know why? You know why a man with real money is unassuming and is not leading with that? He don't want a woman to just want him for his money. He doesn't want a woman that just wants him for his money. He's trying to make certain that he has a woman that really sees him and loves him for himself. So, okay. So I went through A through H as characteristics. A healthy man has the grace. Listen to this. And this may be a little redundant, but it's worth repeating. A healthy man has the grace to empower his woman. If a man can't make you better, if a man can't make you feel strong, Strong and more capable. Why? Let me show you a powerful text in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 through 27. It says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Watch this, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So like Christ loved the church, so a man should be capable of loving his woman. And he uses a powerful word there. He says that he might sanctify and cleanse it. A synonym for the word sanctify doesn't only mean to set her apart, which means to honor her and put her in a special place in your life, but it also means to make whole. If a man cannot, if a man does not have the capacity to empower you or to make you whole, why? Then it says that he might present it to himself, a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle. If a man can't make your life better, why? If a man is dragging you down into the dirt, emptying your self-esteem on a daily why? Why? Okay, so that was that was um, the healthy man. Okay, now now let's talk about broken man. A broken man is a man that has gone through some challenges and has not resolved them yet. 
he has a lot of conflicting thoughts that run through his mind. His emotions are not congruent with his spirit. He's broken. He's broken. You know how you, you know how you, back in the day we had uh, televisions with antennas and, and every now and then you had to get up, you, grandma put some foil on that antenna, I don't know what that was supposed to do, but you got to get up and move the antenna because the, the, the signal going in, eh, eh, something disconnecting, that's a broken man. There's something disconnecting that, that there's not a fluency to this guy's life. I get glimpses of a good guy, but then there's a dysfunction that always peeps up, you know, peeps his, its head over the horizon. He's broken. He's broken. Now, let's define a broken man. A broken man is a man that is out of sync with his creator himself and his woman. He's out of sync with his creator. He's out of sync with himself and he's out of sync with his woman. So he's a guy that's always apologizing. He's always doing things that sabotages the best version of life for him. And he's always apologizing. And, and watch this. His woman feels the sincerity of his apologies, but you know, his constant need to apologize is now breaking her. See, broken people will break you. And there's a point that you got to recognize that what he needs, you don't possess. And you have to, you have to kind of weigh this thing. Okay, let me finish reading this. A broken man is a man that is out of sync with his creator himself and his woman. This disharmony creates a dysfunction that challenges the man's self-confidence, challenges the man's relationship to women, and it challenges his ambitions in life. That's a broken man. His internal issues that, watch this, toxic masculinity has taught him he should not express himself. That's what the world teaches us as men. If you, if, if, if you express yourself, if you talk about your real feelings, uh, you a punk, you less than a man. And the reality is that if there's not, um, what's the word I'm looking for? If there's not an expression of what's going on, there will be an explosion. If, 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 if we don't, if we can't, as men talk about it, there's an explosion in our relationships, there's an explosion in our, in our self-confidence, there's an explosion, and that's what you're looking at when you see a lot of guys today. You're looking at guys that are broken. They're trying their best to play hard and play, you know, Play that toxic masculinity role. I got it all together. I don't need no help. I don't need no counselor. I don't need no therapist. I don't need, I don't need, I don't need no help. Now, going back to what I said earlier, men are typically broken by the absence of vital figures. Dysfunctional indoctrination, that social conditioning, or disappointing experiences with women. Now, when a man is broken and, you know, and there's this, is this, this lack of congruency between his body, his soul, and his spirit, you know, uh, he, he can sense God. He knows, he can sense that God has something greater buried in his spirit, but his soul is so dysfunctional that there's a breakdown. He can't get what's in him to translate to his mind so that he can live it out in his life. And, and this personal dysfunction, watch this, doesn't allow him to flow in harmony with his woman. So while he loves his woman, because he has all of these personal, personal insecurities within himself, because his self-esteem as a man has not been nurtured or, or built up, and he doesn't know how to do it, 
he finds himself uh, almost jealous of his woman's success. When a man is broken, he finds himself jealous of his woman for no reason at all. It's not that his woman has done anything to warrant uh, his jealousy. It's that he doesn't feel good about himself. He's broken. And he doesn't know how to say that. And, and, and the world has conditioned him and trained him through toxic masculinity and misogyny. Well, not even misogyny in this case, because he, he actually loves the woman. But he's, he's, he's so broken, he doesn't know how to love her. Toxic masculinity teaches him she must be doing something. She must be doing something. And it's no reflection on the woman. It's a reflection on the fact that there's something vital, that some, there's something vital that is missing within him. He's broken. Now, every woman that. OK, let me say this here. A broken man is always striving to hide it. You know, like I don't have a problem coming on here talking to y'all about I was a teenage father. I, I was divorced and I was the reason for the divorce. Come on now. I've wrecked the hearts of, of a lot of women. The reason I don't have a problem coming on here saying that to y'all is because I'm free. I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm, I'm, I'm fearful of no judgment. My value is not based on acceptance because I'm whole. I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't have to feed my ego. I know who I am. Some love me. Some don't. I'm cool with it. You know, you ain't got, I don't, you know, you ain't got to love me. Just keep your hands off. I ain't got nothing to hide. But a broken man has a lot of secrets to hide. Things he doesn't want his woman to find out. You know, uh, he doesn't want his woman to know that maybe his credit is not the best. He's working hard. He doesn't even know how to do this thing. It's just some certain moves he needs to make. And his woman know exactly what to do. But because he's broken, you know, he's leaning heavily towards that ego. And he's, he's trying to maintain an image of something. And he's not free enough to be able to say, babe, you know, I'm struggling over here in this area. I need some help. He can't even ask for help. He's constantly trying to hide something. Now, here's an interesting thing. When Adam, when God first created Adam, before Adam sinned and disobeyed God, Adam was the, the epitome um, of a healthy man. After Adam disobeyed God, something shifted, and I want you to see this. If you look in Genesis 3, 6 through 11, it says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took up the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat, you know, he wasn't leading at that time. He slipped off into some old feminine energy right there. And the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sold fig leaves together and made themselves ape. Selves aprons, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the, cool of the, in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? A broken man, a man that is out of sync with God, out of sync with his woman, is always seeking to hide. He's always seeking to hide. And broken men hide behind a few things today. And I want you to pay very close attention to this. Broken men hide behind alpha male rhetoric. I'm an alpha male. I'm an alpha. Let me tell you something. You ain't got to say that. You ain't got to say that. If a lion walked through that door, you know, over there right now, he ain't got to say, I'm a lion. I don't know what I'm, I'm going to try to climb up this thing. I don't know how much good it's going to do me, but I'm going to try to climb up this thing to get out of his way because a lion ain't got to tell you I'm a lion. If a man is really 
alpha, if he's really the leader, he ain't got to be this just, I'm an alpha, I'm an alpha, I'm an alpha. I'm, that's a broken man trying to hide behind alpha rhetoric. The most, the strongest and most alpha-like men you will meet never say it. See the dude that's all out there in the club, I'm like, I beat anybody, I'm an alpha male. He the first one gonna get knocked out by the guy that ain't saying nothing. Guy minding his business, just as quiet. Alpha males are quiet. They don't make all that noise. They ain't got nothing to hide. They're certain, they're sure about who they are. And you're not an alpha male if you're suffering with low self-esteem to the point you have to project yourself onto every scene you find yourself in. Broken men hide behind alpha male rhetoric, sexual superior, I can, I can put it down, I can put it down. I'm a sex maniac, I can put it, man, come on, dude. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. That's insecurity. That's insecurity. That is insecurity. You, you don't have to go around here bragging about your sexual exploits and what you think you got. Number one, I, I'm uncomfortable with a man that's around here trying to even infer what he got inside his clothes. That's, that's insecurity. No real, no real healthy man got to, you know, insinuate, I, I got this and I can do that. No, 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 no. Broken men hide behind alpha male rhetoric, sexual superiority. I'm more man, I'm, I, I'm more man sexually than you. Uh, let us see. Extrovert antics. Extrovert antics. They always got to be seen. You see a man that's always got to be seen making a whole lot of noise, always got to be seen loud. Ha, ha, ha. What's up? What's up? How you? The, the king is here. The king is here. The king is here. That's insecurity. That's brokenness. That's brokenness trying to hide, trying to create a smoke screen so that nobody can see. And then they hide behind high profile imagery. Think about the um, think about the, the men that are actually who they are. They don't lead with on Instagram. They're not leading with what kind of car. They're not dropping names and labels. I was with so and so, and I rode with this, and I I bought this, and I bought that. And that's that high profile imagery thing. Is, is many times, most of the time, broken men hiding. Now, some men are just extrovert. You know, they're not that, it's not that they're not healthy, but most of the time you see this, and when there's an overindulgence in these behaviors, that's a broken man trying to hide from the world. See, a real man, a healthy man, he'll date a woman and... Um, you know, when she really get into his life and figure out what he actually working with, she's like, man, you living like this? Yes, ma'am. Because he ain't got to leave with that. He ain't, he ain't got nothing to hide. He's sure of himself. He's not broken. His, his self-esteem is intact. His, his, his relationship with his creator is in sync. He has a healthy understanding of the male-female dynamic. Now, let me give you the characteristics of, of a broken man. Then we'll move to, to the toxic man because I'm almost an hour here now. Good God Almighty, where did time go? Characteristics of a broken man. Highly offended for nothing. Highly offended for nothing. This, this is a broken man. Highly offended for nothing. This dude gets offended and, you know, you, you almost have to check to see if this dude got monthly hormone problems. He's highly offended over everything. You know, he's offended over the way your, 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 your mama looked when she came. She looked at me a certain kind. Mm -mm. He's highly offended over nothing. He's always, let her be, always suspicious. Always suspicious. Who, who you talking to? Who you talking to? Now he over here on the phone talking. Your phone rings. And, and you, you answered your phone and he took his phone down. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? You ain't asked him who he was talking to, but he, he can put, your, put his conversation down. Who are, you, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? Always suspicious. Always scared somebody going to come and take you from him. A 
Let us see. He's passive aggressive. A broken man is passive aggressive. You know, he, he has a way of um, adjusting the temperature in the room to disc to to you know um, discomfort. Just knows how to make things awkward. He's he's passive aggressive. He's saying yes out of his mouth, but he really means no. And he, he's mastered this thing of uh, being politically correct, but making you feel bad about yourself or a decision you're making all at the same time. He's passive aggressive. In other words, he's not going to just say what he want to say. He's going to be passive aggressive. Or letter D, he's intimidated by your success. Now, I'll say this to you. If you got a little man that's intimidated by your success, um, and you have married him, you need to really think long and hard because that ain't going to end well. If you got a man that is so broken, he's intimidated by your success, and you bringing the money into the house, or the relationship where you all are and he has he even has access to everything you produce and, and he's intimidated by your success, which means you got to diminish yourself to make him happy. Listen to my words right there. Now, you have to diminish yourself to make him happy. See, this is this is how. OK, let me let me do some teaching right here. I forget who I got this illustration from, but. It's a good one. It ain't mine. It's a good one. And I'm going to add a little bit to it. See, a lot of y'all making these relationships based on chemistry, but you've not done your vetting. So you're not really certain that this person is, you're equally yoked with this person. You just have chemistry. See, like, watch this. This bottle cap and this bottle has chemistry. Look how they, look, oh, that's chemistry. That, ooh, that's chemistry. Look at that right there. Good God Almighty. That's chemistry. But when you start talking about being equally yoked, it means that your partner has to have enough capacity to contain you. So can we get, we got to be able to get everything that's in this bottle. Oh, no. In this camp. See, so when you start talking about a little man that's intimidated by your success, he's never going to be able to, he's never going to be able to celebrate you. So it means that you have to diminish yourself to the level that he can accommodate. Sometimes a person is broken. You got to understand that you can't fix them and you got to leave them in the hands of God. Now watch this. Sometimes a man is broken and he's he's open. OK, let me give you letter E characteristics. Mood swings speaks for itself. Letter F avoids deep conversation because he's broken. Letter G can't express his feelings going through all kind of stuff. Can't express his feelings. Locked all up in his mind, you know, sitting in the car in the driveway. You asking him, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? It's not to belittle him, but he can't express his feelings. He's broken. Uh, letter H usually uh, has horror stories about relationships, you know, previous relationships. A broken man needs um, needs a few things. He needs he needs a strong male mentor. He needs, um, he needs a, a very skilled counselor therapist and he needs, to, uh, he, needs a, he needs a strong woman that will be honest with him if he likes it or not. Because sometimes the only thing that will make a man actually look in the mirror and face himself is when he has a woman that confronts him. Now, confronting him may mean it's the end of the relationship. But it also may mean that this dude will may finally go and get the help he needs to get his life adjusted. Right. 
The thing got me right was when my, when my wife walked off and left me. Well, she wasn't my wife, then my girlfriend, Lee, walked off and left me. And I finally had to go and confront this stuff and get myself together and, you know, I went back and got my woman. Yes, I did. Okay, now let's talk about the toxic man, then I'm out of here. Because I, this is, a toxic man, here's, here's my definition of a toxic man. A toxic man is a man that has internalized the pain and it has mutated him into a sociopathic misogynistic predator. I call him many times the angry nerd. This is the little man that, you know, he hates women. He hates the world. And, you know, his whole aim now is to destroy women. Um, and that's usually, you know, the toxic man, that's usually his aim. He wants to do everything in his power to destroy the woman. A toxic man hates the woman. He's filled with anger. He's filled with anger, even towards the world. He's filled with anger and hate. Proverbs 22, 24 and 25 says, make no friendship with an angry man and with a furious man thou shalt not go lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. The first evidence of a man becoming toxic, listen to this very carefully. I believe the first evidence of a man becoming toxic is his unwillingness to cover his woman. He's a man that will throw the woman under the bus, under the bus. If you go back to go back to uh, Adam, we saw him as a healthy man. We saw him as a broken man. Now, let's start looking at him when, when he starts, when he begins to turn poisonous. In Genesis 3, 11 through 13, it says, and he said, God said to him, who told you that you were naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, watch this, watch his behavior now. He, when you first met him, he was healthy. He was saying, oh, you my equivalent. Then he, he got out of sync with God and out of sync with his woman. And now he, he started hiding, trying to cover himself. He's hiding. Now he's turning toxic. And listen to what he says when God says, did you eat of the tree that I told you not to eat of? Uh, let's see. And the man said, watch this, verse 12 of Genesis 11 through 13. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. But what I want you to see there is when he turned toxic, he threw his woman under the bus. You talk about punked out. He didn't even step up and say, well, you know, you did give me the, 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 the orders and I didn't listen. You know, uh, it's on me. First thing he says she did it. Mm -mm. She did it through through the woman under the bus. When a man becomes toxic, the first thing you will see is his hatred for the woman. He will throw. He will no longer cover the woman. And let me read this and let me hear him get out of here. In Second Timothy three, one through six, it talks about a certain kind of man says this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power there from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive, make slaves of silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lust. When a man becomes toxic, he makes merchandise of his woman, of womanhood. He'll sacrifice womanhood for his own good because he's toxic. Now, let me give you the characteristics. Always a mystery about him. A toxic person is always a mystery. Always a mystery. And it's a strange, it's a strange energy that comes from them. Never consistent. 
never consistent. And that's by that's by design. It's intentional. Um, they never talk about relationships. They're not relational. Toxic man is not relational. He's um, transactional. So for those of you that are looking for a man that has a certain amount of money, you have to understand he's, he's transactional. You know, I'll give you X amount of dollars. You give me access to your body. And you think you're creating a relationship. You think you're creating love. You just got a transaction. It ain't, it, well, I ain't gonna say it. He possesses, a toxic man possesses an angry energy. Letter E, he has no ability to feel empathy. Doesn't matter how bad you're hurting, how bad he's hurt you, he has no capacity to feel empathy. He will never feel sorry for you. And he's self-consumed. And I mean, I could have gone on and on, but I decided to stop right there. He's self-consumed. Now, here's it. Finally, the real truth is you will never know what type of man you're dealing with if you are a woman that's still making relational decisions from the surface. From the surface. If, if you're a woman that's not grown beyond looks, swag, and you're not looking deep before you leap, you're going to drown every time. You're going to drown every time. So, hope you got something out of this. Now, I think I'm going to do, I really think I'm going to do, um, if I just get inspired, I think I, I think I'm going to do the female version of this, the the healthy, the healthy woman, the broken woman, and the toxic woman, because all three exist, and brothers need to know, even sisters need to know, because a toxic woman is, um, she's a predator even, even on the female community. She ain't just looking to take dudes down, she's taking sisters down with her. She poisons the sisterhood. Father, we thank you today for this time that we've had to share together. I thank you that uh, some revelation has come forth that will open the eyes of many. Thank you, God. Thank you for supernatural deliverance and freedom. Thank you for growth, God, even in the areas where we are missing it. We thank you for growth now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you all for tuning in. Thank you for hanging out with me. Uh, I didn't mean to be this long, but, you know, I had to do what I had to do. Don't forget to stop by my website, rcblakes.com. Join my mailing list. Do that tonight. Do that tonight. You never know when I'm going to send out something. Sometimes I teach these lessons and I send, I create PDF outlines of the actual lesson and send to my mailing list. So join, join, join it tonight. Um, don't forget to stop by and Look into my online programs. It will, they will bless you. I promise you they will bless you. The one on transcending the father wound, which I, I really did that program in response to a father-daughter talk. Uh, when, when you, but it's not just for women. It's for men as well. When you're struggling with the absence of a father in your life. Those of you that have um, embraced the Queenology movement, we have... The original Queenology message, there's a queen in you based on the book. Then we have uh, part two, the training for reigning. Uh, and we're getting ready to drop the second half of the training for reigning as, a, as an online program. Uh, Wisdom for women in ministry is also there. So, you know, in all of these programs presently are $49 and lower giving it away, really, literally giving it away. And uh, so I want you to go by rcblakes.com and check that out. Of course, stop by Amazon, pick up all of my books. If you've not gotten any of them, pick up, pick up my books. Very soon, we're going to be dropping uh, the book on um, looking at narcissism from a Christian perspective. The title of the book is Me, My, Mine. Me, my, mind. That's the 
psychology of a narcissist and we're looking at it from a biblical perspective. And I admit that I am a novice. I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a mental health professional in any sense. I'm not a counselor, therapist, um, just a man that, you know, seen some things. So we're dropping that book and that's going to be a blessing to a lot of people. Uh, those of you that may need counseling, look in the link, uh, look in the description. There's a link for better help. And um, if you use that link, it will afford you 10 percent off of the cost of the counseling. And they will in turn deposit a referral fee into the ministry for my recommending them. So I love you all. I really, really do. Lisa and I love you. We thank God for you. All of you that sold into my life tonight. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. I just can't tell you all enough how much I appreciate you and love you. When this pandemic is over, we're going to have to have something where I can physically meet you all. Maybe I'll have to have something, a huge thing where you all can come to the city of New Orleans and uh, we can have maybe three days of it with other speakers and I can get a chance to meet you and, and get a chance to take some pictures with you. I miss that so much. So I think I think that's all I need to say. Uh, I love you. I love you. I love you. Pray for me. And um, and I will pray for you. Those of you that that uh, like all of the Queenology shirts, you can also look in uh, Teespring, which is connected to my um, YouTube channel. Or you can go to um, rcblakesstore.com, rcblakesstore.com, and you can see some of the, the dresses that Lisa wears, the shirts and all that stuff that women wear all over the country. All right, I love you all. I got to go. Thank you so much, and I'll be talking to you real soon. Working on an hour and a half here. Good God Almighty. Y'all know I miss church, huh? Love you all. Have a great day.